I think that there's a reason why we make a big deal out of St. Mary's. But the thing that, that you and I have to wrestle with is like, okay, the, the church could be, you know, making a big deal of St. Mary's. And what I mean by making a big deal is that we have a fast, we have hymns, we have like, she's mentioned in every liturgy, uh, like everything that we do, there's always a part that is attributed to St. Mary. We talk about intercessions to St. Mary, all these different things about St. Mary. And sure, the church can decide to do this. And the church is doing it. The church has done it for many, many years. But the question for us is, well, what does it matter? Because if something is not relevant to me and to my life, you can make as big a deal as you want of it, and I will just kind of turn off my brain. And I'll say, okay, that's very nice. Here we go. And I'm back on. All right? So we can do this. Like if you think of somebody who comes and talks to you about something that you really don't care about. What happens? You look at them, you mentally turn off, you nod, and they're done, okay? So the church is, you know, talking about St. Mary's, praising to St. Mary's, asking her to intercede for us, but if we don't see any relevance to us, we miss the boat. That means all this is just like a, a routine, and the thing is, sometimes we have a hard time finding relevance in the life of St. Mary's because what clearly separates her from everybody else, she was the only one to physically bear God. She was the only one to physically carry Him in, his, in her womb and give birth to her, Him and, and watch Him grow up and have that experience. Like, she's the only one. So, off the bat, we can begin to kind of separate and say like, okay, well, this is what St. Mary's does, what St. Mary did and what she experienced. My life has nothing to do like that. Like, no angel Gabriel came to me and said, like, you're going to carry not just, like, God. Like, no angel came and said, you're going to have a saint as a child. <laughs> All right? So there can be such a huge gap between the life of St. Mary and myself. And if I let that gap widen, then St. Mary becomes less and less relevant to me. But the thing is, St. Mary is very relevant, and if she wasn't so relevant to our lives, the church wouldn't make a big deal about it. Okay? The church wouldn't make a big deal about it. Relevance is important because relevance can actually institute change in our lives when we can relate to something. But I think that St. Mary is actually extremely relevant to us because Aside from the fact that she was the only one to physically give birth to God, what we were talking about last week and what Peter shared was that we have all been called to be, what was the theological term you used? God-bearing birth givers, right? That was the term, all right? That theological term that takes two years to learn how to, you know, put together. So, the theotokos is. But anyway, like, you know, we are called to be spiritual God-bearing birth givers. But let's kind of take a look at St. Mary's life. And I bet you if we kind of look at it like in snapshots, we'll see that there's a lot more relevance to St. Mary and what she went through as to our lives. All right? Because I think there's a couple things that all of us are guaranteed to experience in life. There's several things that all of us are guaranteed to experience in life. All of us are guaranteed to experience uncertainty to a degree of uncertainty, of not knowing, like, what to make of things, of not knowing, like, where exactly to, to do or, 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 or go. Like, we experience uncertainty in life. And to kind of piggyback off that, but this is also separate, but, like, we experience, like, seasons in life where, like, we don't have the full picture. Like, we're doing things, but we don't really understand what exactly we're doing, and we're hoping that one day it will end up right for us. Okay, uh, my example is like raising children. Like you're raising children, you're raising children, you're like I, I hope it's going well, I hope it's going well, and like I don't know how it's going to end up because they're still young. I got to wait till they're 25, 30 to see like what we did. All right, so waiting for a period of time. Everybody here experiences loss. Everybody here has lost somebody. Everybody here has had to make a change in life, has had to change 
the way that they do certain things in life because circumstances change, environments change. So we must change as well. And everybody here is always challenged to be a gift to everybody around us. I would say that everybody here experiences at least one, if not everything that I shared. Uncertainty in, in what to do, uncertainty for periods of time on like certain ways of living and, and so on, experiencing loss and pain, and also you know, having to change environments, and also learning that you are a gift to other people. We experience these things because these are a part of life. And when I look at the life of St. Mary, I see all of these. I see all of these. And in all situations, she was a God-bearer to those around. Not just physically, but spiritually. She was a God-bearer to the situation that she was going through. If we look back to her early years, when we really first get a taste of St. Mary in the Bible, like we learn that she was a young, young girl, probably in her you know, young teen years, being told, you will bear the God Almighty, the Savior of the world. I mean, how many of our minds can compute this? Like, how many of us as adults, if the angel Gabriel came and said, you will bear in your elderly age the Savior of the world? Like, our minds couldn't wrap, be wrapped around it. There's uncertainty. Not just uncertainty on how it will happen, which she asked her questions and got her answer, but exactly, like, how it's going to play out. How, like, what was going to happen with her and Joseph. And then, you know, the situation with Herod and having to leave and move. Like, there's so much uncertainty that painted the beginning of St. Mary's life. And I think we all face uncertainty. St. Mary had to struggle with the idea of, like, raising the Savior of the world and what that was like. And when you look at when Jesus was 12, after they left the feast, you know, a Passover and leaving Jerusalem, going back, and Joseph and Mary thought that Jesus was in the crowd because they traveled in the crowds. They traveled in a pack because it was safer. And Jesus was actually sitting back in Jerusalem. Like, as parents, like, under, like wondering, like, are my parenting techniques the right techniques? Like, if I lost my child, and not just any child, the Savior of the world, like, this is kind of a bad one, all right? But rushing back to Jerusalem and, and, and looking and trying to find their son and finding him in, in a place where he can actually get into a lot of trouble because what he was doing at the age of 12 of questioning the Pharisees and talking about Scripture and so on, could he... If that could have happened at the age of 13, he could have been tried as an adult. But at the age of 12, he was spared one year. Where if he said something along the lines equating him to, his, to, to God, at the age of 13, could be put to death. But at the age of 12, was okay. So St. Mary coming onto the scene with Joseph, worried, terrified, wondering, like, I know that this is a heaven-sent child, but, like, how do I let go? How do I hold tight? How do I, like, raise him? And wrestling with these questions because Luke tells us after that when they went back to Jerusalem that St. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart and pondered them from the age of 12 to 30 when he started his ministry and continued to ponder past that. And so she wrestled with, well, how much of a role do like, I, I play in raising him and not raising him and when do I let go and when do I not let go? Questions. And without, say, St. Mary, lost a son. Knows what it is to lose. And after, at the conclusion of the loss of her son, though he came back, he, he ascended, but Jesus appointed her a change in environment where now she was to go and live with John, with St. John. And, and, and learn and understand, like, a new environment and change. And throughout all these changes in life, she continued to bear God in the situation. She continued to keep it calm, to be patient, to be prayerful, to be faithful when we don't have all the steps. And St. Mary knew not just because she physically bore the Savior of the world, 
that she was a gift to others, but she knew that her gift, even after she had given her son, her gift was in herself. And I came across a nice quote from one of the church fathers that I wanted to share that gives us a little peek into St. Mary after the ascension of Christ, the role that she played to the apostles. And this quote was written by St. Ignatius the God-bearer, who was the disciple, was said to be the disciple of the apostle John, who was housing St. Mary. And this is what St. Ignatius wrote. If it is made possible, I intend to come to you in order to see the faithful gathering in Jerusalem, and especially the mother of Jesus. They say of her that she is honorable, affable, and arouses wonder in all, and all wish to see her. But who would not wish to see the virgin and to converse with her who bore the true God? With us, she is glorified as the mother of God and the virgin full of grace and virtue. They say of her that she is joyful in troubles and persecution, does not grieve in poverty and want, and not only does not get angry with those who offend her, but does, but does good to them still more. And all who see her are delighted. I thought that was an awesome quote, an awesome, like, sharing. And I think it speaks to the life of St. Mary, the entirety of her life being a God-bearing life, that it wasn't an isolated event that took course over 10 months, but it was in every situation that she faced, situations of uncertainty, situations of question marks, situations of loss, situations of changing in environment, situations of persecution, that in all these situations, she bore God. And how she bore God radiated out into all the apostles. To that so many were wanting to go to Jerusalem, yes, to see the gathering of the faithful, but to see the mother of the Lord. Because it wasn't an isolated event. It was a lifetime. And it was a lifetime filled with a lot of challenging moments. Moments that you and I all face. But she faced them, and she gave us an example of how to face them while still being a God-bearer, which is the mindset of a person, which is the heart's desire of a person, to be a God-bearer in every situation, no matter how big or how small. So I think St. Mary is extremely relevant to us because what we face, though the circumstances, the different people involved, it's different. But the challenges are the same. The challenges are the same, making St. Mary extremely relevant to us. Because when you find someone who bore the image of God in the face of every challenge that we face in this world, that's an example. And that's something to look up to. And that's something to imitate. Because St. Mary had a big effect, not just at her time, and in those who haven't even met her but heard of her, but for generations to come, she will be called blessed. You don't remain blessed for generations to come having lived a life defined by an isolated event. Isolated event of bearing Christ put her up here. But when you add the entire life of St. Mary, as being a God-bearing life, that's when generations continue to bless you and learn from you. So I think St. Mary is very relevant to all of us. And if we look closely at her life, we will 
see how she handled the same challenges that we face daily. So in that, we're going to continue to honor our mother saints.